Winter, the dead time of the year. The branches are lifeless, and the surface of the pond is like a stone. Only the fish are content. But if you look carefully, you'll see that spring has begun, and soon the plants will come to life. Seeds in the ground have started to sprout. Trees break into leaf. Soon it will be summer and the garden will be full of vegetables and fruit. Of course, it doesn't happen as quickly as you saw just now, but we know that trees come into leaf and plants grow and fruits ripen every year. It's part of the life cycle, which is a law of nature. This fruit is now ready to pick, but what happens if we leave it? It will rot and when summer ends, the plant will wither. That too is part of the life cycle. The trees lose their leaves, blown down in the autumn gales. Some of the leaves have been swept into a heap and they will rot down to become food for insects or compost for the garden. But compost helps new things to grow. Growing is part of the life cycle, and so is dying. Once things die, unless we do something to prevent it, they start to rot and decay. This happens to all food unless we take precautions. Sometimes the results can be dramatic. Though it won't happen as quickly as this. But it will happen to any food if it's left lying around. Food can decay in two ways. Inside a plant or an animal are chemicals called enzymes. They're much too small to see, but they help it to live and grow. That's fine during life, but when it dies, the same enzymes attack and rotting starts. From outside, there's another attack, and this comes from tiny living things called microbes. All food rots, and that's a problem not just for the gardener, but for us all. We need food all the year round, but most foods can only be gathered at certain times of the year. store food until we need it. At one time, a farmer would have used a building like this. It's a barn, and he would have stored all the crops he harvested in it. 
and we've known for a long time that many foods stay fresher if they're kept cold. So if you look in old houses, you'll find they've got cool places like cellars or larders where the food was kept. A hundred years ago, this cellar would have been filled with food. Nowadays, we use a fridge or a freezer. We even put freezers on lorries so that we can keep food cool when we move it from place to place. Keeping food cool isn't the only way of keeping it in good condition. Food is also protected as long as it remains sealed in cans or bottles or packets. Every one of us must look after our food. The farmers who produce it, the food factories which process and package it, and us. In our own homes, we must protect food from the microbes which cause decay, which make it unfit to eat and which may make us ill. This is an ordinary street, and behind this hedge is an ordinary house, and it's full of microbes. Microbes is the name we give to a group of tiny living creatures. They're around us all the time, although they're too small to see. Some of them are useful and help us to make food, but others can make food go bad or make us ill. Let's see what they're up to. Yeast is the microbe which makes dough rise. And if it weren't for some microbes, we wouldn't have yoghurt or cheese. But if we leave these around for too long, other microbes will also make them go bad. Remember, food can make us ill, even if it doesn't look bad, so we need to be careful. Don't leave food uncovered and in a warm room. That's just how microbes start work. Helped, of course, by the cat. Animals carry microbes to food. Wherever there are animals and dirt, there are microbes. And if there's food and warmth as well, then they'll grow and spread. In a sink like this, microbes will spread like mad. Perhaps you think this board is smooth and clean. Well, take a closer look. In all these cuts and scratches, there are tiny bits of old food. And where there's food, there are microbes. So we need to get rid of them, and then we can keep our food safe and clean. In closed jars, in sealed packets, and in tins and cans. Because the food has been properly treated and sealed in a container, the microbes can't get in to start their work. At least, not until the tin is opened. But that's all right, because these tomatoes are going to be used straight away, so there's not enough time for the microbes to cause problems. And here's a real threat to microbes. Most microbes can't survive this heat. And most don't work well in cold, either. And we can make life hard for them if we wash our hands properly in soap and hot water. They can't get to work if we clean all the equipment in which we keep food or which we use for cooking or processing. We must wash all the surfaces which come in contact with food and wash the cloths that are used in the kitchen. If we do all these things, the microbes won't stand a chance. Of course, a restaurant has to deal with microbes just as we do at home, but because there's a lot more food about, it's a much bigger problem, so you really have to be very careful indeed. Look how clean this kitchen is.
This is fish. It's been cooked and frozen, and now it's going to be packed into boxes. Can you imagine what might happen if instead the food was left about so that microbes could get to work? Protecting fish from microbes begins at sea. People have fished the seas for centuries. At one time they only caught what they could eat, but now fishing is big business. And when you're looking after thousands of tons of fish, you're fighting a big war with microbes, and you might have to fight it a long way from home. Fishermen sometimes have to sail far out into the ocean to get their catch, because boats can't just go and fish where they please. There are rules which say which kinds of fish you can catch and how big they should be, so the mesh of the net is checked to make sure it doesn't trap fish which are too small. There are rules as well about the number of fish you can catch. Otherwise, it wouldn't be long before there wouldn't be any fish left. Care must be taken to get fish back home in good condition. Once it's on board, it needs to be frozen or packed in ice to preserve it. As soon as it arrives at the dockside, it's sold. Some of it goes to shops, and it's still cold when it's bought. But most fish goes to factories, where it's put into refrigerators until it's ready to be used. That's usually within a day. This fish is going to be washed to take the slimy slipperiness off the skin before it's filleted. While this batch of fish is washed, the last batch of place is being filleted. When we fillet a fish, we cut off the parts which are good to eat and throw away the rest. These people are at work all day and they fillet thousands of fish. Too many for the factory to cope with all at once, so they stop the fish rotting by freezing it. Each one of these fillets is laid onto a roller which takes it inside a big deep freeze. When the fish comes out, it's frozen solid. Now the fish are frozen, they can be kept like this for several weeks if necessary, until the factory needs them for the next process. These women are sorting pieces of frozen haddock, which are going to be covered with breadcrumbs and fried. First, the haddock is coated with batter. Then they put on breadcrumbs. Then there's a second coat of batter and a second coat of breadcrumbs. The next stage is frying. When each piece of fish is cooked, the heat kills the microbes. It's then taken again through a freezer, because it may not be bought for some weeks, and while it's frozen, the microbes can't get to work on it. All this fish is frozen solid. It's packed into bags and weighed to make sure customers get the right amount. The last stage is to pack the fish into boxes. 
Then these are taken away to be sealed and put in cartons. Every box is stamped with its best before date and the fish should be eaten before then. And until it's eaten, it must be kept frozen or the microbes will start work. Just the thing for a meal. A piece of fish would go well with peas, beans or potatoes. But what will happen if we open the packet and just leave it around in the warmth of the kitchen? We must take the same precautions in our home as they take in a food factory. If we leave any food unprotected, in the end this is what happens to it. Of course, that was at top speed, but could anything have been done to stop it? These apples were picked in South Africa weeks ago, and they've been brought thousands of miles to our shops, and they're still good to eat because they've been kept cool. This has stopped the microbes and enzymes getting to work so fast. We do the same at home with a fridge. But why do we need to keep the fridge at the right temperature and the door shut? Why do we use a freezer as well? Cooling and freezing food is one way of slowing down the process of decay. But there are other ways and we've known about them for centuries. Putting food in cans and killing the microbes by heating isn't a new process. But this machine is. These cans are going to be filled with baked beans. First the beans go into the cans, then the tomato sauce. When the lids have been sealed on, the cans are heated to cook the beans and kill the microbes. When they've been heated, the cans of beans will be good to eat for a long time. But once they've been opened, microbes will get in and the beans must be eaten quickly. Another way of preserving food is to add chemicals like vinegar. We call this process pickling, and that's what's going to happen to these onions. The first job is to fill the jars. Then the vinegar is added. Once the lids are sealed, the jars are heated. The onions will now be fit to eat for months to come, but they should be eaten by the date on the top of the jar. What can we do if we want to preserve grapes? They won't taste nice in vinegar, so we dry them. Most microbes need moisture to work. If we take that away, the grapes, or sultanas as they now are, won't rot. Now they're going to a special machine which weighs out exactly the right amount for packing. The sultanas will be edible for a long time to come, as long as they're protected. And there's the date by which they should be eaten. But why do we need to preserve food? Will this farmer need to store the food he grows? Of course he'll store some grain to sow next year, but then he just needs enough to feed his family and maybe sell to his neighbours. To feed the world's growing population, vast amounts of food are needed. But that's not all. 
we must be sure we can get it to the people who need it and that it will be fit to eat when it gets to them. Although we know some ways to keep food safe to eat, scientists are still looking for new ones. Their work will improve the way food is looked after throughout the world.